Good afternoon, VHS sports fans, to today's boys' soccer match. I am your announcer, William Miller, and today the, ma the fighting clan will be matched up against St. Augustine Prep School. It's a slightly cloudy day out here today, but I feel like this should be a pretty good match. And there goes the first kick. St. Augustine kicks it over to VHS's goal. <laughs> Beep. And that looks like that will be the first out of bounds of the game. <laughs> Possession handed over to Vineland. Kicks the ball, heads quickly over, header. VHS kicks it back towards their goal. Number 15 of Noah Sarnoff kicks the ball over. St. Augustine hand over to the goal. And that will be out of bounds. That will be a throw in. St. Augustine throwing in the ball. Kicks the ball over to the net. Header. And it just goes over the net. <laughs> That'll be a goalie kick for VHS. Kicks the ball over to the number 27, which is Hayden Bertanazzi. <laughs> and that looks like that is out of bounds. Possession back over to VHS's goalie. Goalie kicks it off. St. Augustine intercepts the ball, passes it over. VHS is able to get it back, shoots it up in the air. Header. St. Augustine kicks it away from their goal and out of bounds. St. Augustine throws it back in. And that looks as if that will be a penalty kick for VHS. VHS kicks off the ball. Over to St. Augustine's net. Their goalie kicks it off. 
St. Augustine passing it amongst themselves. That is the number four of Anthony Calabrese. Double header back and forth. St. Augustine heading towards the goal. Noah, Sar Noah Sarnoff kicks the ball up. Number eight of St. Augustine, Christian D'Angelo, is able to header it up into the air. Looks like the number 20 of VHS, Gabriel Garten, throwing the ball in. Number 38 of St. Augustine kicks it up. That is Drew Davis. St. Augustine hang quickly over to the goal, passes it to the number seven, but Noah Sarnoff kicks it up into the air again and just out of bounds. St. Augustine throws it in. Heading towards the goal, kicks it over towards the goal. Number nine of St. Augustine goes for the kick, but it just goes and hits the pole of the goal. Number seven does not seem to be on our roster. Header from the number 20. Number 11 of St. Augustine intercepts it. VHS's goal is able to catch it and kicks it back in. Almost halfway across the field, St. Augustine hits a header, which hits it back to the middle of the field. <laughs> As the number 10 of VHS chasing the number 10 of St. Augustine. I got my secondary announcer here with me. How are you doing today? I am good. Kyle Bennett here with you. Friday afternoon soccer here at Vineland High School. Good old-fashioned rivalry, Vineland. And St. Augustine Prep is always one that you circle on the calendar no matter where it's at. So looking forward to what should be an exciting game this afternoon. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> See if Vineland can break through from the double overtime games that they've had recently. Yeah, I remember Monday's game. Back-to-back yeah, -back double overtimes against Millville, against Hamilton, so we'll see if. St. Augustine kicks it in. It looks like from their own header actually hits it over the goal. Good benefit there for Vineland. They'll be able to clear it, hopefully move the offense going and get an early lead here. Let's hope so. Oh, and that looks to be another out of bounds. That was a close one. <laughs> that was close. It looked like it went off the foot just ever so slightly from number eight from St. Augustine. It's Christian D'Angelo. Yep. But they called it in favor of St. Augustine, so they got the throw in. They have possession now. Looks like that is the number 12 of Gabe Bearer. 
Looks like the goalie of St. Augustine is just able to keep it out of there. And that looks like it's going to be a penalty kick for VHS. And that looks to be the number 10 of VHS who's hitting that off, who we do not seem to have on our roster. It was the right idea, nice placement there, just went right into the hands of the keeper, but got under it you just got to give people that are around the edge of the box there kind of an opportunity to get a head on it get a foot on it and pop it in the back of the net but right idea there for Vineland exactly Coach Myers can't be mad about that opportunity there looks like the number eight is going to be hitting it uh throwing it back in that's going to be D'Angelo tosses in St. Augustine the so number 12 moving towards the goal, passes it over, but VHS is able to intercept it. That looks to be the number zero of Ernie Bernhardt. It's kind of a ticky-tack call there. Not really sure. Looks to be one, but looks to be another possible penalty kick for St. Augustine, maybe. <laughs> Direct kick just outside the 18. Looks like St. Augustine is deciding how they want this uh, kick to go up second. Kicks it over, VHS defense. blocks it with a brick wall defense. <laughs> Great defense there for Vineland. Absolutely amazing defense there. Then moving up like a whole brick wall was able to stop the ball. <laughs> they got the secondary defense in there as well after the rebound, so great effort there by Vineland to stop. St. Augustine there, and I know Vineland's offense today playing without one of their key players, Austin Donato, is out. Really? Received a red card in their last match. Interesting. So that results in a two-game suspension. As a header from St. Augustine, that looks like looks like the looks like the number three, but I don't think we have a number three on our roster. Austin's one of those crafty players that just adds a, a dynamic to the offense for Vineland. So to be without him is rough, especially in a game against a team like St. Augustine, who are extremely high powered on all sides of the ball. Oh, especially. But so far, Vineland's been giving a valiant effort in the early go here. Looks like they had number 11 racing after the number 18, and it looks like he's going to gain possession of that after Augustine kicked it out. Well, it's Josh Majeka Dumney. He's one of the stars on this team. You give him a little bit of space, he's going to beat you in the open field. That looks like St. Augustine kicking it over, but there seemed to be nobody over in that side just yet. Goalie intercepts it and tosses it over. Now that won't show up on the stat sheet or anything, but that's a good rundown and good defensive play by Ernie Bernhardt there, keeping his eye on the ball, running it down in tandem with Descalzi coming up out of the goal. Looks like VHS is starting to get closer. Nice shot Goes on the ball the from Josh just off the mark. But that's the type of plays that, that Josh can make. You know, he's got the foot where he can launch it from that distance and potentially find the back of the net. And he's, he's got the leg power. And at it's the moment just a matter a of having the accuracy. And at the moment, with a nothing and nothing game, taking risks like that is a good idea for sure. It keeps the pressure on St. Augustine's defense, keeps them honest, and it gives you those opportunities when you are closer to get more effective shots off. So I don't hate that play at all. And Josh is confident with the shots that he gets off game in and game out. 
it does seem to be a lot of back and forth, mostly with uh, VHS defending. Uh, but a good defense will definitely rival a good offense from St. Augustine. And one of their anchors is number 15, Noah Sarnoff. He is one of the best one-on-one -on -one defenders that you'll see in South Jersey. He plays his matchups perfectly. He's not afraid to get physical. I've known him for a couple of years since uh, fifth grade, and it, he's always been a great soccer player. And their defense kind of goes as Noah goes, and as long as he's out there, they are going to have a force to be reckoned with on that he, back end. He played really well at the Hamilton, uh, Hamilton game. Yes, he did. Looks like that is the number nine of St. Augustine. That is Alex Clark. St. Augustine heading back over towards their way. All right, looks like they were able to defend it back. VHS kicks it for a long shot over. Intercepted by the number 30 of VHS as Gino Descalzi. I know it's Gino and Nett, so I'm not sure who the actual number 30 is right now. As St. Augustine finds the back of the net. That will be the first point of the game for St. For St. Augustine. And that's kind of what happens when you end up playing more defense as the game goes on. It becomes an easier opportunity for your opponent to kind of find the holes in your defense. And they were able to kind of just sneak one through and, and push forward. And that's what St. Augustine does so well. They're able to push the ball. Give more info to your rival and they'll find your weak spots. And I mean, if you're playing more defense, your defense is going to get tired out easier. And that's one thing where, you know, Vineland's offense has to have better possessions when they do have the ball down here to create opportunity and, and keep this game close because we know from year over year, St. Augustine knows how as soon as they find, you know, the crack in the dam, they're going to be able to put points on the board. And, that's what Vineland's defense has to be able to prevent, but it also comes from your offense, keeping the ball down in their side of the field and being able to kind of go goal for goal with them. And they're one of the toughest teams to do it, but. Speaking of, VHS moving quickly over, but it looks like that just went out of bounds. <laughs> They've made a couple good runs over to St. Augustine's goal, but it seems like every time they just get intercepted or just shoot it out of bounds. It's Moses Arku, another Extremely talented player. He's got phenomenal footwork. and If he gets open space, look out, because he is extremely talented with the ball. Looks like the number zero kicking it up and headering it. That would be Bernhardt again. St. Augustine takes another shot on goal. It's a good call by the referee. Offsides. That will save Vineland a bit of trouble. It was the right idea there for St. Augustine. They, they got the perfect switch, switched the field there where there's not a lot of traffic going on. and A great touch on the ball, just kind of play it onside. Goalie kicks it off, and it looks like it will go out of bounds straight from the goalie kick. St. Augustine tossing it in, but VHS putting a hard defense on them, trying to keep them, keep that ball away from them. And that's something where Josh needs to make that run earlier. It's a good play on the ball there, but if he makes that run earlier while number 30 has it, he's able to push the ball even more forward. And Moses Arku, way to stay with it, goes out of bounds. Looks like that's going to be going to VHS. Looks like it's going to be a looks like it's going to be a corner kick. No, it'll be a throw in, I believe. It's shy of a corner. Yeah, throw in. Throw in it looks like then. Kicks it up in the air. Number 9 from St. Augustine intercepts Good effort. it. Got to get back. There's a number 7 who was fighting with Sarnoff. 
AHS putting up quite the wall defense. There Passes go, it to the number 19. Oh! And that looks like Good that is call. going to be a kick for VHS. Quite the tumble they took there. These are the opportunities you have to capitalize on against a team like St. Augustine. When you're down one nothing, you have to kind of execute the proper play here. And you obviously want to do that all the time. But here in particular, you got to be smart with your ball placement. idea. St. Augustine just able to kind of inch forward on it. Ooh, That's massive shove. Good call there. There was no play for the ball, and it's a yellow card. Wow. Wasn't a play on the ball, so it's a great call by the referee there. You know, can't have that at any level. Kind of just going player for player rather than player going for the ball. So yeah. it's the right call. Yeah, it looks like Vineland is going to get a free kick on goal for that. St. Augustine still putting up a defense in between Vineland's players. I believe it's Sant Andrea taking the kick. It's on the far side and number not facing us, so. Yep, it is Santandre with the kick there. Kicks it up. That looks like it was a header from St. Augustine. The pressure. Santandre gets there. I don't know how that stayed in bounds. <laughs> that is a good question. That's physics for you. Looks like Augustine fighting amongst themselves just to get the ball. Good effort by Noah Sarnoff there. Playing off a great defense against them. Good turn. Able to get the ball. Good turn there by Noah. And they call it out of bounds. And Augustine throws it in. Looks like VHS is running fiercely towards it. Got quite a few players running towards the ball. It's like the number nine fighting with the number 12 of St. Augustine. 38 kicks it over. And that's one of those things, and I think Luke Barufi will tell you, he's got to step to that ball, can't be afraid to step to it. Vineland's just got to be more aggressive with their steps towards the ball. They're kind of letting the ball come to them right now. They've got to be more aggressive in stepping to the ball and creating a little bit of havoc with possessions for St. Augustine. Something like that, you know, kind of sitting and watching the ball. you got to step to it and kind of make your own luck in some of these situations where exactly. you can't let the luck come to you. You can't let the play come to you. It's like they're a passing clear by Gabe Garten too. Again, someone's got to run after that ball. You see somebody put a foot on the ball, you got to run after it, run towards it. And make the opportunity. That's not just going to come to you every single play. Good save by Descalvi. Kicks Great it almost kick, halfway across the field. Actually a little over halfway across the field. Again, that's one of those things, you know, he kicks it and nobody follows the ball. You got to track, you got to be able to track that, especially if you're an offensive player for Vineland. You got to see where the ball is, follow it off of Geno's foot. Right. Because as that ball landed, landed in the middle of three players from the prep and no red jersey was around it. And if you looked at uh, some of the other uh, kicks from the goalie, you could see that St. Augustine a lot of the times would header those balls and uh, – Head it more towards over towards VHS's goal, uh, while VHS didn't seem to be there, like you said. Passes it to the number eight. 
and quickly over. Looks like he was going for a pass. Ooh, just trips Noah Sarnoff over. And it looks like that will be no goal. Waiting to see if that counts or not. And it looks like there is a lot of chaos going on here. I have no idea what they're going to call here. But nonetheless, it's not the right call. That ball never crossed the line. It never did cross the line. I'm not sure if they're fighting more specifically about the goal or if they're fighting about uh, possibly Noah Sarnoff uh, getting tripped by the other player sliding to catch the ball. Which shouldn't have been because Noah made a play on the ball. It wasn't like he was going towards the player, like player on player contact. He played the ball perfectly. Correct. So it looks like they are restarting it. So it looks like it may actually count uh, for St. Augustine. Yeah, we'll have to find out at halftime for everybody watching at home because I, I generally don't even know what the call was. They threw the X up. It wasn't like it was called a goal. But we'll find out if that counted or not. And what the whole situation is, I'm sure. Coach Myers will be looking for an explanation there. For sure, any more points against uh, VHS would not be uh, very good for them. No. St. Augustine really putting on the pressure though as they uh, hit the ball out of bounds again right behind the goal. That looks like it is going back. Uh, Tossing another ball to the goalie for a uh, goal kick. And again, Lineman's got to be able to track this ball wherever it goes, whether it's in the air or on the ground. You got to be aware of where Gino's going to be sending it. Picks up the ball, and it looks like they were a little bit more uh, proactive this time and started heading towards the ball. But also, you can't have it just kind of be one on one play. You got to have multiple guys kind of aware of an idea of where the ball is going to land. That way you're not leaving somebody out on an island and that way it's not a, a three-on-one matchup and there's no chance of you getting possession. Right. Any possession right now for Vineland would be uh, very helpful for them. Number 38 of St. Augustine kicks it over to the other side. No, Sarnoff goes to grab it. Looks like the goalie kicks it. And it looks like it will go out of bounds. Now go St. Augustine to throw it in. Looks like they throw it into their goalie. Goalie kicks it back to the player that uh, threw it in. Right now the number 48 of St. Augustine has it, uh, of which we also do not seem to have on our roster or is on our roster but has an unlisted number next to them. And it looks like that will be a penalty kick for VHS. Uh, it sounded like one of the St. Augustine players grabbed his shirt. Number 30 kicks it, and Wide it goes right. out of bounds. Still goal, no good. <laughs> a lot of just standing around, but this is not characteristic, really, of what I have come to know this Vineland High School soccer team to be over the past couple of seasons. A lot of standing around early in this game, and Against a team like the Prep, you just can't do that. You can't sit and watch plays unfold. You have to be proactive at going at the ball and attacking. It, it does seem they are more so just waiting for the ball to get to them, um, which, like you said, is not a very good idea for them, especially going against St. Augustine. Looks like VHS will have possession. 
Yep, it'll be Ernie Bernhardt with the kick. Right around midfield. This one get a head on it. Hits it, St. Augustine puts a header on it. And again, just watching. This and it kicks it right over our broadcast our, uh, truck. <laughs> yeah. For a second, I thought it was going to hit our uh, wonderful camera crew who's up right now on the left. Uh, special thanks to our camera crew today, uh, by the way. We have three cameras up and running, and we have our wonderful director right in the uh, van running everything for us. And as Vineland throws it in, it looks like they you kick it right back out. That. You can't just kind of willy-nilly just kick the ball out of bounds like that. You gotta maintain possession in this zone in particular. And it's just not situational awareness there by Vineland. You gotta, you gotta settle that more than just trying to boot it to the next angle. It's like Vineland kicks it Good over turn again. From Ernie there. And Augustine moving quickly over. That looks like the number zero going back to grab it. That's Ernie. And it looks like he goes out of bounds. So Be that's going to go kick. to the HS's goalie for the goal kick. Luckily, the weather is nice out today. With it being cloudy, it's was, nice and breezy. was nervous that. There are a few stormy clouds out here, but it shouldn't be much of a problem. VHS kicks the ball away, but it didn't look like there was anybody there to really receive it, so St. Augustine was able to intercept it. And it looks like VHS is going to get another kick. Possibly another chance to score a goal, which they really need at the moment. I think the ref called another pull on the jersey there. Not 100% sure, but that seems to be a little push in the back. Playing pretty rough today, and it looks like it goes out of bounds again. Jonathan Ridley. Seems a good play there, but nobody was in the vicinity to kind of, you know, capitalize on and it seems like they're catching a lot more trying to catch it with their feet than their heads or trying to intercept it with their chest and knock it back down. Just to settle it. That's the big thing. Is Vineland's trying to just make the big play rather than create it. They're almost trying to force it to happen. You can't do that against a team like St. Augustine. They're too disciplined. They're very talented. It looks to be like they're subbing out some of their players. It's a great turn by St. Augustine, but Moses Arku's all over it. And that looks like... Goal kick for Vineland. Yep. That's a concern right now, too, is, you know, you're playing so much defense, but you also have some of your your big-time offensive players are having to get back on defense more so than being prepared for the ball to come their way. And Great head there. as the game presses on that they don't tire themselves out from having to get back on defense and playing both ends for an entirety of a game. You want guys like Moses Harku and Josh and you know, Luke Barufi to be fresh up top so that they can create opportunity when the ball does get into St. Augustine's end and hopefully put the ball in the back of the net. Now it looks like it's going to be another uh, penalty kick for VHS getting a free kick. It looked like uh, one of the St. Augustine players knocked over VHS's player uh, either intentionally or unintentionally while going for the ball. Noah passes it over to the number 20, and it, and it 
just goes out of bounds again. Uh, almost saved by the number 11 of VHS. Substitutions for St. Augustine. It's two substitutions so far for St. Augustine. It's going to be Bernie Rakowski probably taking the throw here as he jogs across the field. Nice throw. Oh. Shocked that the ref didn't call anything there. It did seem like he was going specifically for the ball and maybe uh, he just tripped over the ball uh, while Noah Sarnoff was going. I agree with you 100%. He was playing the ball, but in the past I've seen refs make that call probably 90% of the time, and I disagree with it 90% of the time. So good on the ref for letting them play on there. Number 20 of St. Augustine. Oh. Oh. Uh, Sarnoff goes for the ball, and it looks like that'll be an out of bounds and pass over to St. Augustine. Gonna be the number 12 throwing it in. Number four headers it. Number 11 headers it again. Ball seems to be clear. more up in the air than on the actual ground. <laughs> Gotta clear it. Now Sarno kicks it over, but the number 20 is St. Augustine, headers it right back over towards VHS's goal. And it looks like St. Augustine kicks it over to their goalie for a pass back. Number 20 is St. Augustine. Moving pretty closely over towards the goal. And it goes in, and that is going to be another point for St. Augustine. Goalie seemed to move up a little bit too quickly and didn't stay closer back to the goal, so they were just able to hit it right over the top of him. Uh, CJ Phillips there for St. Augustine on the goal. He is a freshman. Very unfortunate play for VHS, but uh, St. Augustine definitely took advantage of the fact of how close the goalie was to them. And that's the thing, you know, I was talking about, you got to clear the ball, and every time Bunman tried to clear, nobody was there to help, and it was just kind of just one touch on it, and St. Augustine was able to combat that and keep it down there, and you can only bend, don't break so much in those situations. Just an unfortunate turn of events there, and it's either 2 nothing or 3 nothing. St. Augustine. We'll find out at halftime what the situation was earlier in the game that did end up counting, which I think it did. I'm going to go and say that it's 3-0 in favor of the prep. Which means Vineland really needs to get their act together and start moving quickly. And, I mean, you go into these games against St. Augustine as kind of a litmus test for where you are in the season right now. And Vineland's played valiantly in a lot of their games in the early go here. They're just trying to break through and get in the win column in a lot of those where you have two double overtime draws. And Looks like the number two of VHS was fighting pretty hard there to get the ball. That is, a, that is Jonathan Ridley. St. Augustine's a talented team. They're year in and year out in the state playoffs and the non-public group playoffs. Just have talent that they're able to bring to their program year in and year out. And you just got to kind of find a way. And Looks like St. Augustine gets it up into the air. I got two players already ready down by uh, VHS's goal. One mistake against a team like this can lead to a 3 nothing lead for them. So, Looks like they're playing fairly rough today as well. Uh, a lot of these plays I've been seeing uh, almost, almost as rough as some of the football games we've seen. The two teams can get physical and it's one of those things, too, that, you know, when the score does start to get a little lopsided, you got to keep your composure as well. I can imagine that's the difficult part, though, uh, trying to keep your composure, especially with a 3-0 uh, lead against you. Wanting to play hard, but 
playing too hard, you end up with situ situations like that. However, that one is ruled in favor of VHS, and it looks like they are going to get a free penalty kick for that. And you'll have things happen like that on both sides of the ball, and, and the more, you know, St. Augustine ends up scoring in this game, Vineland ends up scoring, hopefully, as this game progresses. It's going to get physical, and you just got to be able to stay level-headed. You can't let the heat of the game get to you. You know, you're already playing down one of your better players in Austin Donato today, and you can't afford any big-time penalties or any big-time calls against you in a game like this. It's a nice touch on the ball, just shy. Oh. Goes over the crossbar. So close. Luke Barufi put a nice touch on that ball. If it was just a little bit lower, then it would have been the first point for VHS. It's the right idea. and I mean, Luke has the leg as well. and You know, he probably wishes he had like 0 0.2 seconds more to kind of adjust on that shot but again I don't hate the opportunity there you have to be opportunistic when you're down three nothing and just trying to find a way to get on the board to create any type of momentum as whistle blows and it's going St. Augustine's way is whistle blown on Anthony Calabrese it looks like that is going to go to St. Augustine for a penalty kick that was a very uh, tough one to call there. Wow, they're going to call a yellow card on that as well. Which seems a little crazy because it was more so just yeah. momentum. He had too much momentum going over, and he just happened to fall over right in front of VHS. Uh, or in front of the VHS player, and he just happened to trip. They just happened to trip and over each other. That's a product of this game potentially getting physical. You're going to get more tightened up calls from refs that don't necessarily warrant a yellow card but to kind of send a message to the players and everything you're going to get calls like that I don't agree with that whatsoever the VHS bleachers over here fans parents and everything don't agree with that either I'm sure coach doesn't agree with it but I can assure you he does not <laughs> Vineland can't afford another red card either being down another player would not be a great situation for them HS's goalie hits it up into the air. And it looks like looks like it's gonna be goalie a goalie kick. kick for VHS. Kicks it over, but nobody over there. St. Augustine kicks it back over to the center field. Again, just standing around watching is going to be the downfall today. So far, just the amount of standing and watching the ball rather than stepping to and, and creating opportunities is, is the difference in the scoreboard. St. Augustine is not afraid to step to the ball. They're putting good touches on the ball. Vineland has just done a lot of sitting around watching and waiting for the ball to come to them, and you just can't do that against a team like the prep. Looks like Vineland is going to go for a massive shot upwards. Goes out of bounds. Sadly. It's the right idea. It was a good turn by Ernie Bernhardt. Just didn't have the accuracy to keep it in bounds. Ooh. And it looks like they're going to call in favor of VHS again. Another small tussle between uh, St. Augustine and VHS. Kicks the ball over. St. Augustine able to intercept it again. But VHS heading quickly over to the goal. And goes right in between one of the player's legs and out of bounds. Uh, seems like a possible miscommunication between the two players. Number seven of VHS running over. St. Augustine is going to get that ball, though. That was the number 50 of Eli McKinney. Number 
number 32 of St. Augustine has the ball. No, Sarnoff going to defend it to keep it out of the goal, but it looks like it was just kicked back over to the number 20 of St. Augustine to get it out of the way, so that way VHS didn't get possession. Looks like the number 27 of Hayden Bertanazzi uh, fighting hard with that ball. And that looks to be an offsides for St. Augustine. They were in the rectangle. Indirect kick for Gino Descalzi here. First half should be coming to a close relatively soon. And we can go ask the yeah, ref and see what the situation, see what the is. situation was there. No, Sarnoff hits it up into the air. VHS definitely was the first to get to it this time. However, they just don't go after the ball. If they went after the ball after they hit it up into the air, they might have a better chance of scoring. It's been the story all day. They've done a lot of just sitting and watching rather than stepping to the ball. It seems very uncharacteristic for the fighting clan because it seems uh, when Hamilton was rolling around, they seem to be putting up a lot more of a fight. Maybe it's just one of those off days today for them. Who knows? <laughs> is halftime. We'll take a quick break and be back after the half or second half action here from Vineland High School. You're watching Boys Varsity Soccer on the Vineland Public Schools YouTube channel.
Hello and welcome back to VHS Boys Soccer. I am your announcer, William Miller. I am here with Kyle Bennett. How are you doing today? Good. We better finally can find a way here to get on the board. They're trailing three nothing after the half, and just a lot. Of, you know, we talked about it during that first half. A lot of uncharacteristic, just standing around waiting for the ball to come to them. They've got to be a lot more proactive in the second half if they want to have any chance at a comeback. But against a team like St. Augustine, you know, going down in a 3 nothing hole through one half is a tough feat to overcome. So we'll see how Coach Myers and Coach Santiago kind of, you know, rallied the boys at halftime as St. Augustine was really close to goal number four right there. That was number seven, who's not listed on our roster. It was a great touch on the ball, just a little too much emphasis on the follow through and goes over the crossbar. And while we're coming back from halftime, might as well be a good time to look at our current lineup that we have. There have been a couple substitutions here and there, but either way, both lineups are pretty strong. And hopefully with the change of sides, uh, VHS might be able to score a goal in the last half of this game. Good track down by Ernie Bernhardt. Make a turn here. It's all right. It looks like Smart defense there, getting it out of bounds, kind of stalling the momentum there. That's all you got to do when you're kind of like backed into the corner and close to the sideline there. If, if you can't make a turn to keep it inbound, just stall the momentum, make them throw it in, and get your defense aligned to play a little prevent here off the throw. St. Augustine throwing it back in. Looks like VHS kicks it way up into the air. No, Sarnoff kicking it up into the air again. There you go, Josh. Be proactive. Go to the ball. Slide from St. Augustine trying to intercept that ball, but it looks like he just hit it back before they could get that. That looks like it's going to be another out of bounds, but passing it over, but VHS is going to gain possession of that one. VHS kicking it over. St. Augustine still powering through VHS's defenses. Noah Sarnoff heading towards that ball, <laughs> fighting hard against the number nine. And it looks like the goalie is just going to go out and grab that for a goal kick. Or maybe not a kick. He's just going to roll into the field. VHS just lightly dribbling the ball over there. Fighting with St. Augustine just to gain possession. That is the number 12 there of Gabe Bearer. Or Bayer, pardon. like that is going to be a another goal kick for VHS. Kicks it up. St. Augustine headers it back, but VHS kicks it right back to them. Augustine kicks it back to VHS. Back and forth ping pong game going over here with <laughs> the <laughs> soccer ball. And Augustine's goalie kicks it over. VHS taps it over back to one of their other players. Noah Sarnoff going up for the ball. It's a good switch there for Vineland. Kind of clear the, the chaos a bit. And it looks like that is going to go out of bounds. That is going to go to St. Augustine to throw back in. Number Good 13. Step. Number 20 of St. Augustine. Getting it back to the number 18. For a second there, I thought they were going to kick it all the way back to their own goalie. There you go, Nick. That's a spot where someone has to try to get open, where Ernie's kind of dribbling up the field. You want Ernie to take one less step there with the ball and kind of send it. That one's up in the air. St. Augustine Scalzi sends it up. Ooh. His own player. Ooh, double trip. Wow. Yeah. 
Something's up with the uh, Violent we players down. We got a violent player down on the ground. Holding his hand between his legs. Something that tells me he got hit in uh, quite a vulnerable spot. The player that ran into Gino. I think Gino's knee might have just caught him right in between the legs. He was facing Gino from the back. And Gino was coming forward to kind of almost volleyball spike it out of the way. That's again, you know, that's something where violence got to be more communicative. Be like, hey, I got. It. It's almost like baseball with, you know, a pop fly, and you have multiple infielders or infielder outfielder running after the ball. Hopefully, he's okay. That is the number Escaped twenty. Guard. Yes. Like you said, hopefully he's okay. But it is similar to baseball where you have multiple players in the infield or the outfield kind of running towards you. You got to yell, hey, I got it, I got it. Right. Miscommunication can be the biggest problem for any sports team. Looks like they are. Looks like they might be subbing him out. Yeah, possibly. He's have to come out. Looks like he's subbing in for uh, number twenty-three. Yeah, Matthew Wheeler is subbing in for him. It looks like a goal kick from VHS kicks it up, and that looks like it is going to be looks like a penalty against St. Augustine. It looked like the number 11 there was grabbing on the 23 shirt, stopping him from really moving. VHS going for another goal kick as they get a retry at it. Kicks it up into the air. St. Augustine holding back the number 11 of VHS, which I'm surprised they didn't call that as he basically had his arms locked around uh, the number 11's arms as well, keeping him held back. Uh, even hearing some of the players yelling, no foul, no foul. Very interesting header decision from the 23 there. And that looks like it is going to be an offsize as well. Gotta have more spatial awareness. Looks like that is going to be a indirect kick from St. Augustine's goalie. Have more spatial awareness when they're in St. Augustine's zone and just knowing where players are. So and it looks like they kick it up over to souvenir. the stands, almost hitting people on our stands. Uh, which would not be good as we have one of our cameras in their stands. If it would have gone a little higher, we would have lost a uh, very expensive camera. The price of showbiz. Some very wild plays today. Uh, a lot of headers, a lot of the ball being more up in the air on, than on the actual ground, uh, which has caused it to go up into the stands. And even over our van at one point, But playing hard today and trying to keep it away from the other players is uh, going to lead to stuff like that. St. Augustine throws it in, headers it over. VHS kicks it way up into the air. Number 12 of St. Augustine headers it over. And that looks like it's going to be another offsides. Looks like that is going to be a kick for VHS. VHS kicks it. Very strong kick over to Augustine's goal. Number 23 kicks it up into the air, but Augustine's goalie is just able to grab it to stop any movement from there. If VHS moves some of their players a little bit further over to there, they might have had a chance at scoring a goal. Yeah, Matt Wheeler just kind of has to be able to track the ball a little bit better after he makes that initial touch. He lost the ball in the air. And Number 27 the sliding over, uh, out of bounds. Uh, St. Augustine gets repossession of the ball. Number three passes it over to the number 10. That's kind of a soft call there. 
and that looks like that is going to be a free kick for a uh, penalty kick for St. Augustine. Um, number 27 did kind of grab one of St. Augustine's players, but it didn't really seem too much. Didn't really have much to do with the play, and that's why I would have just let them play on there. But again, when you have multiple yellow cards in this game, you got to call it a little tighter than you typically would. Luckily, VHS's goalie is just able to catch it uh, before it ended up going into the goal. St. Augustine kicking it back towards their goalie, which is an interesting play nonetheless, but move it out of the way of any VHS players. It's a header from what looked to be either, looks like possibly the number 19 out there. VHS's goalie kicks it up to the number 10 and number 9. Number 27 kicks it over to the number 23, heading over to St. Augustine's goal, but nobody seemed to be moving over to grab the ball, which is a very, very interesting and out of character for VHS. Feynman did change goalies at halftime. It's Rich Pepe in net. Big collision. Oh. And that looks like they are checking on St. Augustine right now. That was the number 16 of which we do not seem to have on our roster. A lot of these numbers we don't seem to have on our roster for some reason. Status quo. Kicks it over and the VHS goalie is just able to tap it so it goes over the bar and behind the goal. Very lucky play there. Uh, if it, if he would have been a second too late, possibly could have gone in. And it looks like that is going to be a corner kick. Number 10 kicks it over. Noah Sarnoff hitting it way up into the air with a header. Goes right over the back line over there. And that looks like that is going to be a corner kick for St. Augustine. Let's see how they do. Goes for a kick, kicks it out a little over to the side. Number 10 goes racing after it, but it looks like that is just going to go out of bounds again. I understand the play St. Augustine was going for, trying to pass it a little bit more. Uh, over to one of their players closer to the net, but they also had a lot of open players uh, a little bit further out that might have been a slightly better uh, pass for them to go to. And it looks like that is going to be a goal kick for VHS. Kicks it up in the air, over. And that looks like it is going to be a kick for VHS, uh, if you could see there on the cameras, one of the St. Augustine players tried to do a header. They grabbed him to the shoulders of a VHS player and pushed himself upwards to try and hit it. VHS number uh, four going for the kick, Anthony Calabrese. Kicks it over. And it looks like Noah Sarnoff fighting hard to go over to grab that ball. Number 19 of Moses Arku going for it. Up into the air and out of bounds again. Passing over to St. Augustine is going to have possession to throw it in. St. Augustine has the ball, kicks it way far over to the other half of the field. Trying to get it as far away from their goal as they possibly can. Moses Arku passes it to the number 30. Number 10 of VHS fighting with the number 10 of St. Augustine to get possession of that ball. Clear there for Vineman, trying to stall the chaos a little bit. Ooh, no, it won't chase that. But it's 
very big kind of dive over the ball uh, for the goalie there to grab it. That was a dangerous play by Noah Sarno up there. It's very like dangerous uncharacteristic. Play. He jumped in the air while the ball was still on the ground. He kind of tried to predict what was going to happen. Almost led to some dangerous play around the goalie there. And it Luckily, it didn't translate into anything, but luckily an interesting decision there from Noah. I think he would say the same thing. Goalie throws in the ball to the number four of VHS. Back over to Noah Sarnoff. Looks like they're kicking it over, and that is a, looks to be another out of bounds. A lot of out of bounds out here today. It's a good step by number 11 from St. Augustine. Number 11 there, who we also do not seem to have on our roster. So very interesting how many of these players we don't seem to have listed next to these numbers on our roster. Um, but we're working with what we got. Come on, Luke. Kicking up a bit of dirt over there, fighting to get the ball. VHS kicks it ball. up. Oh, very close to the goal and just offsides. gets caught by St. Augustine's goalie and an offsides as well to rub a bit of salt in the wound there. Good feed, good idea. You can play it on side. St. Augustine's goalie kicking it over. Looks like Gabe Garten's warming up on the sidelines too after he collided with the keeper earlier on in this half. So good to see him back up on his feet, kind of getting some sprints in on the sideline to get warmed back up. Looks like he's gonna be coming back into the game pretty soon when they get another substitution opportunity. That'd be very helpful for them. Like St. Augustine has possession. It's going to be a throw in from the sides. Throws it in to the number 20. No Sardoff going pretty hard to go over and get that ball. Sarnoff throws it over to the goalie. It looks like that's going to be a goal kick. Who did we say was on goal again? I was told that Rich Pepe is now in goal, but not 100% sure if that's accurate. Find out after the game. St. Augustine moving quickly over there. Vineland kind of swarming over there. No, Sarnoff fighting to move that ball away from their goal. Tries to kick it over to the number two. However, the number three is able to header it over to the number 16 of St. Augustine. And it looks like it is Almost out, and it looks like that is going to be an out of bounds for VHS. That is going to go over to St. Augustine to throw in. Uh, that is the number 12 of St. Augustine throwing it in. Uh, that is Gabe Bayer. No, Sarnoff kicks it way up in the air. You got to have more than Luke Barufi running after that ball, though. It's a three, sometimes four on one situation. On. If you're outnumbered like that, it's it's not going to go in your favor. Seems like St. Augustine's goalie was uh, kind of playing with VHS a little bit there. Uh, not going straight for the pickup and kind of letting them run a little bit closer. Gabe before. Garten's back in the game for Vineland too. Good sign there, number 20 in red. Oh, great substitution. And we're getting goalie subbed for the prep. Looks to be the number zero of Matt Carr. Taps in for Parker Ramsey. 
kicks the ball over to the net. Ooh. A little bit of a collision between two of the St. Augustine teammates. Looks like the ref is going to call that uh, as both of the players seem to be down on their knees in pain right now. Uh, pretty tough collision between the both of them. Means we looks like they will be substituting out uh, a couple of their players, not just the ones that got hurt. see who gains possession of the ball at this current time. It might be Augustine, it might be VHS. VHS wasn't really at fault, it was more of just a collision between two St. Augustine members, so who really knows who possession will go to. And it looks like possession will actually be going over to St. Augustine. fighting with the number 11, number three, getting the ball back, kicking it over towards the goal. Goalie goes over and grabs it. That was a close one as uh, it looked like the number, I want to say 48 uh, was right over by, no, sorry. That was the number nine uh, that was right over by the goalie. Uh, hit the ball up into the air. like the number seven of St. Augustine heading over towards the goal. VHS trying to get the ball away from their goal, but the number six running up goes to take a shot, and that is a shot and is a goal for St. Augustine. That was by the number six of Peter Ernest. We are now up to 4-0 St. Augustine up. Had a Flashback to the uh, Hamilton game there for a second. <laughs> I said earlier after the first goal, once you let one up against this team, they find ways to score even more, and now it's 4 nothing. Now you're kind of just competing to find a way to score at least one here. But again, a, a game against a team like St. Augustine is very much a litmus test for where you are in the season at that point. Hopefully this is just VHS having one of those bad days or besides, it, or it could just be the fact they're going up against St. Augustine. And that was an almost out of bounds, kicks it over. And that wasn't out of bounds. <laughs> yeah, it was a push from behind, too. It's another yellow card on St. Augustine. It's a good call by the ref. I saw that from over here, even with some chain link fence in my view. Luckily, that ball didn't go any higher or further, or else it might have accidentally ran into our <laughs> little announcer table over here. Tough game today. Hopefully VHS can bounce back a little bit from this. Looks like, looks like the ref is currently count, uh, counting all the uh, players at the moment. Looks like it's going to be Ernie Bernhardt kicking it off. Kicks it over to the number 13. 
Number 11 goes to grab that, but it goes right out of bounds. Number 3 of St. Augustine throws it back in. Goes out of bounds off of Island again. That's the number 6 of St. Augustine. Slowly moving up to the goal uh, just on the sidelines from out of bounds. Goes up. No, Sarnoff headers it with another St. Augustine player. That's number 11 fighting with the number 6. That's going to go over to VHS, uh, interestingly enough. Number 13 passes it over to uh, Ernie Bernhardt. Number 13 there being Nicholas Santandrea. Ernie kicks it way up over to the number three of Everett Cronk. Come on, Josh. Number 11 kicks it over and it just goes off to the, to the left side of the net from where we're standing, the right side of the net for the goalie. That goalie, to get a better touch on that ball. He had that goalie being St. Augustine's Matt Carr seems to be the goalie at the moment as he is the number zero unless our roster is incorrect. St. Augustine's goalie hits it up. Header from VHS is number 20. Uh, that's Gabriel Garten. And as an out of bounds, that is going to be a throw in. Uh, for VHS again. three of St. Augustine kicking it over. Number 13 headers it just out of bounds again. St. Augustine number six tosses it in to the number 15. Number 15 is dangerously close to that goal. Ernie going over, number 19 kicks it over and it just goes right past the front of the goal, luckily for VHS. St. Augustine kicks it back over to VHS's goal, and it looks like that is going to be an out of bounds. St. Augustine's going to be able to throw that back in as it looked like it was kicked out of bounds by a VHS team member. Wide left and over towards the baseball field. I guess you could say they were shooting for a home run. <laughs> That's going to be a goalie kick for VHS. VHS kicks it. Almost kicks it. VHS goes for the kick, kicks it over, passes it over to the number 30. That was a bit of a shove from St. Augustine. St. Augustine going really tough. Try surprised they didn't call a foul on that one. Number 15 being really aggressive there. And number 15 being CJ Phillips, really grabbing all of the VHS players. Number 20 of St. Augustine kicks it up. Header by one of the VHS players. Number nine of St. Augustine heading over. Number 30 kicks it over. St. Augustine is able to intercept it, so it's moving towards goal pretty quickly. That's the number 18 of St. Augustine, uh, of which we still do not have on our roster. And that looks like, looks like an out of bounds in the first place. Um, Looks to be a corner kick for St. Augustine. We'll see what VHS does to defend against uh, St. Augustine's corner kick. Kicks it up. Intercepted by one of the St. Augustine players. VHS putting up a pretty decent defense. Kicks it way over the goal. 
Luckily for VHS, it just so happened to go over the goal over into the uh, parking lot uh, off to the very back of the field over there. VHS is going to get a uh, goal kick. VHS kicks it up. Three different players trying to go for a header there. Only one sort of successfully getting it, which seemed to be uh, Joshua Makajumi. Joshua fighting hard there with the ball. VHS kicks it over, but seems to be intercepted by St. Augustine. Augustine kicks it back over. That looks like Noah Sarnoff over with the number nine of Alex Clark. And that looks to be that looks to be an offsides. So that is going to be a kick for VHS. And that is a header from St. Augustine, which they're also going to call a penalty for, surprisingly. Uh, I didn't really see what had happened there, uh, but VHS is going to get repossession of the ball uh, a little bit closer to the net now. Uh, if they can make the right play, they might be able to score a goal, but we'll see what happens. VHS kicks it up, intercepted by St. Augustine. St. Augustine passing it a little bit further back, kicks it way over. Surprising that VHS's goalie decided to move up that much. Very risky move by him. St. Augustine moving very close. Offsides. And that is another offsides, which luckily just saves VHS's goalie. It looked like he was going to be able to get the ball beforehand, but still, that is going to be another good thing for VHS. Although, considering how this is going, it may end up seeming like it will still stay a 4-0, to zero, unless VHS can really pull out a pretty decent power play uh, in the last half of this game. Just the way the ball's moving with Vineland, there's no communication between the players on offense. And it seems I, a little sporadic. It, it's very much, I think, in part, too, they are playing a lot of defense. They are not moving the ball down into St. Augustine's zone whatsoever. And it looks like the goalie's just able to save that. Uh, very close one there. But they're just, it's too much attempts at trying to play hero ball and get one, and, and you just can't do that. I mean, that's what leads to sloppy possessions, that leads to turnovers, and that's where Vineland's at right now, and that's why it's four to zero. VHS's goalie kicks it up. Oh, and that is a tumble right there. That looks like the number 11. That's Joshua. Although he seems to be walking away from it perfectly fine. That looks like that is going to go over to VHS for, uh, for possession. Card again. That's the third yellow card on the prep. Third yellow card on the prep. Ooh. Hopefully it's not on the same player because that would be a red card for them. And while they are our rivals, a red card is not good for either team uh, to lose any of its players. VHS goes for the kick. Kick by Santandrea. Kicks it up, and they just header it away from the goal, way up into the air, and the goalie is just able to catch it. They seem to have a lot of space over off to the side. Maybe if somebody was able to get over to it and hit it off to the side that was open before the goalie could get to it, they may have been able to score a point. While it has been a while since I've played soccer, uh, I do remember 
how to do some of the plays, although high school level is a little bit higher than what I used to play. Luckily, the ball hits just into the side of the goalie on VHS's side. That's going to be a uh, goal kick for VHS. VHS kicks it up. That's a header from St. Augustine, and that looks like as also going to go over to VHS because St. Augustine pushed one of VHS's players uh, to get a header on that ball. In all honesty, I'm surprised more of the St. Augustine team hasn't been yellow card or red card yet with some of the uh, very interesting plays I've seen from them so far. And that is another kick out of bounds. That looks like that's going to go over to St. Augustine. Doesn't seem like St. Augustine's team seems to be tiring out that much either. Joshua moving up, kicks it over. That looks to be out of bounds again, but that is going to go over to VHS. VHS throws it in uh, to the number 30. And at this point in the game, it's St. Augustine's more or less playing keep away have good footwork on everything and prevent Vineland from scoring and keep their shutout intact with a 4 nothing lead as we get and another whistle. It looks like that might be a penalty against St. Augustine, uh, possibly, as we could see after they got out of bounds. Both of them did kind of tussle with each other a little bit there, falling over. VHS's goalie going for another kick. Kicks it over. It's not the best kick there. He's got to get more elevation on that. Gets it over to the number 32, which is Bernie, Bernie Rutkowski. Good clear and play into space there for Vineland, but oh. Not much there. They're going to have to resettle here. Sant Andrea plays it back to Bernhardt. Bernhardt sends it to the opposite side of the field. But St. Augustine is able to get a header on it and head it back over to the center of the field. It definitely seems to ver be a very ping pongy style of game, just constantly going back and forth between the two, between headers and just kicking it back and forth and not really moving uh, very far for VHS. And that looks like that is going to be a kick for uh, St. Augustine. I mean, you can tell Vineland's tired. They've been running up and down the field the entire game. They haven't had many opportunities to create momentum offensively. and. When you look at the other side of the field and see Vineland's bench has maybe three substitutions compared to a full fleet on St. Augustine's bench, I mean, it makes the difference. I mean, even looking at the rosters here, we have quite a few uh, varsity soccer for VHS, but St. Augustine uh, has almost double the amount. Uh, also, that was a kick out of bounds, uh, luckily for VHS. It makes a difference when you can keep guys fresh and you can have multiple substitutions for active players. And again, that's why I've been saying, you know, it's it's kind of a litmus test game to see where you are in all your phases when you play a team like St. Augustine because they're going to have the, the substitution game spot on and, and be able to keep guys fresh and keep guys' legs fresh. And it makes a huge difference. Very interesting play there from VHS's goalie passing it so close to a uh, player, that being the number 13 of uh, Sant uh, Andrea. St. Augustine kicks it way over. 
and it looks like that is going to be the fifth goal of today for St. Augustine. Just so happened that one of the players got close enough to the goalie and was able to roll it almost over the goalie, and he just wasn't fast enough to go and grab that ball. At the moment, it is five up, or five to zero, St. Augustine up. VHS seeming to slow down a little bit, be a little bit more tired. Uh, fighting clan still seems to be fighting well enough with their defense, just doesn't seem to be playing up to their full potential today. It's an unlucky goal there. He had a hand on it and it kind of just rolled away from him with his body contorting backwards. And to save, I know the goalie's going to want back and he'll probably tell you he should have had that one. And most certainly, coaching staff probably feels the same way. That's a great touch from number 27, Hayden Bertnazzi for Vineland. But it, uh, goes it, out of bounds, and he'll get the throw in here. It was indeed a very unlucky goal. Uh, just like uh, with the news we got on the third goal, uh, where it just so happened to get a tiny bit past the line, and the ref saw Allegedly. it. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly got past the line, and the ref saw what looked like the goalie grabbing it and pulling it back to himself, meaning that either way, the goal was called, so it is going to count un unless somebody goes back and reviews the footage. Too much standing around there. there. There's an opportunity there, and you're leaving your guy out on an island. And you got to step to the ball and give him some help. You can't just sit and watch. Josh does seem to be putting a little bit of, uh, a little bit of pressure on some of the St. Augustine players. Uh, but it does still seem like a lot of the VHS players are just waiting for the ball to get to them rather than going for the ball itself. Good touch from Bertinazzi. Nothing there, though. Number 27. That's another thing, too. You can't, Augustine. you can't just assume a penalty is going to get called. You have to play the whistle. You can't just sit around and bait for a call. You have to wait until you hear that sound. And if it doesn't get whistled, you got to keep going for the ball. The play's not going to stop. And you just play the ball into the feet of three St. Augustine players there, and you lost possession. St. Augustine moving quickly over, but it looks like it is going to go out of bounds, and that's going to go to VHS's goalie. It did end up going over the uh, touch line. Um, but it's a little bit lucky for VHS. If the goalie actually goes for a uh, higher kick this time, uh, he, uh, VHS might have a uh, better chance. And it looks like, looks like the number 13 is setting up on the side. Goalie kicks it over to what looks like the number 20. Vineland trying to move it very quickly over to uh, St. Augustine's side, but St. Augustine putting up quite a lot of players just to keep VHS off of their side. As the number six who uh, gets the ball back of St. Augustine, that's Peter Ernest. St. Augustine passing it amongst themselves. Uh, that was the number 50 who we just saw. That was Eli McKinney. St. Augustine still has the ball heading very viciously over to the goal. But luckily it looks like Bernhardt is able to kick it away. Uh, McKinney grabs the ball back, however. Number 48 there of St. Augustine kicks the ball over to the number 21, uh, of which we do not see him on his roster. And it just goes over the top of the net. Uh, very lucky for Vineland, not so lucky for St. Augustine. Although at this point, St. Augustine doesn't really need any more goals. At five already, they're already way up, and with probably at this point with the uh, second half almost being either halfway through or almost close to done, there's not really much that VHS can do. St. Augustine headers it back up. No Sarn or yes, no Sarnoff able to get that ball back. Number 37 of St. Augustine. 
who also does not seem to be on our roster. And that is another goal for St. Augustine against VHS. That is the sixth one tonight. St. Augustine really putting a lot of pressure on VHS's team. I think that was Bernie Rakowski, number 32 for the prep that scored. That was a great touch. It's a a one-timer on that. Played it perfectly in the back of the net. Not much you can do there. Yeah. Seems to be pretty unfortunate for the uh, fighting clan today. Very tough match for them today. Um, as the sun does seem also to start coming out as well as we get later into the game. And that looks to be the end of the game. St. Augustine comes away from this victorious. Six to nothing. Uh, very unfortunate day for VHS. However, the fighting clan did still play decently well if they moved a little bit more and were able to be a little bit more aggressive then possibly they could have scored a couple goals either way thank you guys so much for tuning into the broadcast uh for anything sports related conferences uh plays check out the vineland public schools tv channel i'm your announcer william miller i'm here with kyle bennett and Thank you guys for such an amazing match. Thanks to our TV crew, our three camera people, as well as our producer in the van. And we hope to see you guys at the next match.